Hello, welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. Are you ready for this? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so this pattern comes to us from the 1960s. I don't know specifically what year, but it came out of a magazine from the 1960s. Doesn't she just look so stunningly 1960s? I'm obsessed with this woman's face in this photo, but we're gonna focus on the hat and the cowl, but they call this a collar. Now, when you, if you do pick up this pattern, the print is a little small on it. I find it super helpful to just read it off the computer, but um, you know, I'm gonna work with this with you guys because the camera does help to magnify things quite a bit. But the print is a little small. Um, I did my best to make it bigger without it coming off the margins so that's as good as it's gonna get I apologize in advance for that okay so what we need for this it's essentially um, Red Heart Super Saver two strands together so they're looking for this uh, Germantown which is a wool and then I don't know what this I don't know what this is I can't find it online but they want you to use two together Okay, so as far as yarn amounts go, just wanted to say this real quick. I've already finished the project before before the tutorial gets started, and I'm really bad at figuring out yarn amounts. So what I can tell you is that each one of these is 364 yards. We use two at the same time, so this is what I have left over from that. I, I'm never, I've never been very good at calculating yarn amounts. So I figured a visual representation might help. What I can say is if you buy two skeins of Red Heart Super Saver, you're going to have somewhere around half of each one left. <laughs> so, okay, that's the yarn amounts that you will need. Okay, so as far as hook size goes, in the video you're going to see me using this hook here, an 8 millimeter. I actually undid all that work, as you can see right here, because it was still coming out too small and it wasn't meeting the gauge. I thought it was, but it wasn't. So now I am using a nine millimeter. So you're gonna see a sample of the work here. I finally have met the gauge. So we need three rows of clusters to be two and a half inches. And I have it right there. Here is the end of my cluster row right here, my third cluster, and look at that, two and a half inches. So nine millimeter, a size M slash N, nine millimeters so at the end of the video for the hat at the end of the hat portion you will see me using this orange one but as i'm instructing you how to at least work the stitches how this how the pattern works you're going to see me using this pink one so there's that so now what you're going to see is us getting into this portion here again you're going to see the pink okay guys grab your two strands of nice wool or whatever you're going to choose to use. It needs to be a worsted weight Aran weight yarn. Okay, it wants you to start off by chaining two. And of course, I'm going to work a, uh, a magic circle, but I'm going to start off with the way the pattern wants. So we're going to start off by chaining two and into the first chain, work six single crochet. Okay. If you want to work a magic circle, I will show you how to do that. Do like a Spock, right? Come up and over and toward you. Keep your two front fingers open. I'm holding everything down here now. And create an X. So you're gonna come towards you, come up under, wrap around, come over and create and X like this. Come back down here and hold on to everything with your ring finger and your thumb. Grab your hook, point it down so you can hook the bottom back strands and pull those forward. Now, twist around and hold everything. See, this is not, this run back here is now not secure. So you're gonna have to hold everything together and pull your fingers out. Go ahead and tension up your yarn like you normally do. Grab everything now and chain one to secure it. Twist it this way just a little bit and there you are, you have your magic circle, okay? 
You'll have to practice with that quite a bit before you get it down pat. Unless you're one of those people, super achievers, you can just pick up anything right from the jump. I'm not one of those. Okay, we're gonna work six single crochet and you'll wanna slip stitch into your starting single crochet. I should sh uh, point out really quick, work these kind of loose. This is my tension right now. It's just a nice free flow with just a little bit of tension, just the smallest amount. I'll do this really slow so you can watch the yarn, watch how fast it's moving and you get an idea of the tension I'm holding. See how it's just free flowing? You'll want to do that because the first two rows, if you do these starting single crochet too tight, your next row up and your next row after that is gonna be really hard for you to work into. So it's gonna be really important. I guess I can just finish these six on here with you. One, two, three, four, five, one more. I'm working them kind of loose, as you can see. Pretty, pretty loose stitching that you can see there. All right, slip stitch into your, well, let's tighten up the circle a little bit. There we go. Slip stitch into your starting single crochet. Chain one and into the same stitch that we just joined into. Work two single crochet again. Keep these, these are the most important to keep loose. So two single crochet. See how I'm keeping them loose? Next stitch over, work three single crochet. One, two, and three. Next stitch over, work two single crochet. One, and two. Okay, that's the repeat all the way around. We are looking for 15 single crochets. So my next stitch over is gonna be three. One, two, and three. I guess I can finish this with you too since we're almost to the end. Next stitch over is two single crochet, one and two. And then the last stitch, don't ever be fooled by this, this is a false stitch. The stitch that your your slip your um, chain one is coming out of, that's a false stitch. This is actually our last stitch right here. So let's work three of them. We started with two single crochet, so we should end with three. Two and three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Slip stitch into your starting single crochet. There you go. Now chain one and into this first stitch we just joined into, yarn over and work one half double crochet. Now into the same stitch, because this is the body of our stitch right here. This is the front post of our stitch. Our half double crochet is coming out of the top of it right there, so into the body, around the front post of this stitch, we're gonna work a three wrap, um, well, they call it a cluster, but we call it a puff stitch nowadays. So a three wrap puff. So yarn over and pull up a loop, and it said to pull it up about an inch. Yarn over, pull up another loop, and then one more time, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through everything. Chain one to secure it. Now, the next stitch over looks like it's this one, but this big old puff stitch is actually hiding our next stitch over. Our next stitch over is right here. If you turn your work around, this is the next stitch over that we have to work into. Okay, so yarn over and work a half double crochet into that stitch. Now into the body of that stitch, which is right here. If you can see, here is our half double. Now here is the body of that stitch. Here's the back, that's the body of the stitch. So we're gonna work a front post puff stitch again. One, two, and three. There we go. Chain one to lock it in again. Our puff stitch is hiding the next stitch we need to work. If you move it aside just a little bit, that's the stitch we have to work into. So you're gonna work a half double crochet and that's the repeat, is you're gonna work one half double crochet followed by a front post puff 
all into the same stitch in every single stitch around. We are looking for 15 puffs made before we get back around to the beginning. So I'll work this puff with you one more time. Again, here is, the here is our half double right into the top of our stitch here. And coming just down from that right here is the body. There we go. One. Two. Yarn over. And three. Pull through everything. Chain one to secure it in. Push your puff out of the way and there's your next stitch. The puff properly hides it. There it is there and you'll work a half double crochet. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, let's close this round off together. Again, this is a false stitch. Your last stitch, if you move your puff aside, is actually right here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there is, and if you're ever confused about that, just count your puffs and know, oh, that's not a real stitch. Okay, so, we work our half double crochet into the last stitch. Then we work our last puff around the front post of it. Oh, one, two, and three. There we go. Chain one to lock it in. Now we come over here into the top of our first half double crochet and slip stitch. And I don't think I got into it right. No, I did not. There we go. Slip stitch into the top of that. What am I doing? Okay. There we go. Chain one. Now into this next, what looks like a stitch over is where we're gonna work our next half double crochet. So you're gonna see that we've got what looks like a stitch right here. And then we also have our chain one at the top of our uh, cluster or puff stitch. So into this, what looks like a stitch before, they call it a loop in the pattern. You're gonna work your half double crochet. And we're still gonna work front post puffs, but we're gonna work them around this little strand right here, which is the chain one that locked in our puff. So come around that strand and work your next puff stitch. One, it's gonna feel a little loose. Two, and three. There you go. Chain one to lock that in. Also that chain one is where we're gonna work our next puff in the next row up. So here we have our half double crochet. We're gonna skip over it and into this space right next to it is where we're gonna work our next half double crochet. And this is the repeat all around and for 10 inches. So this is just a one row repeat. One, two, and three. There we go. Chain one, yarn over, and into this space, here's our puff, and here is the little space right next to the puff right there. And that's where we work our half double crochets. One half double crochet, yarn over and around the strand. See how it's coming up this um, out the top of our puff. That's the strand we're going to work around right there. One, two and three. And then the next space over, skipping over the half double crochet and working into the space right next to it. Okay, let me show you the picture, what it is that we are doing. Do you see how the puffs are all stacked on top of each other and they've got a half double crochet in between them, but we're creating sort of a spiral. That's why we aren't working into the top of the half double crochet, but rather into this sort of chain space right next to it. This space right here. See, that's this is the top of our half double crochet, but when we come back around again, we're actually gonna be working into this space just past the half double crochet. So, and that's gonna push all of our stitches going in that direction, creating that spiral that we need for this pattern to work. And it will be the same 
for the what they're calling the collar or the cowl. And we're also going to be making our own buttons. So keep working in this stitch pattern round and round. You will always join into the top of your actual half double crochet, but you're going to work your first half double crochet right here into this chain, what looks like a chain one space right next to it. Um, but keep working this round and round. And it says, repeat round four for, for 10 inches from the beginning. So from right here, we are looking for 10 inch growth out of this. There we go. So until there are 10 inches worked. Now, as we continue to work this, it's gonna start to take shape of like a bowl, okay? And that's, that's what it's supposed to do. So keep working this stitch pattern for 10 total inches from the center out, and then we'll work the last round together. I'm gonna add, we are looking for 15 puffs in every round, so we're not, we're not gonna add any more puffs to make this continue to grow. We are working, we are basically working um, an increase almost every round. It's, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's gonna, it, it is gonna continue to grow even though we aren't adding any more puffs or anything like that. It's just going to take its shape. It's magic. <laughs> okay, so I have achieved my 10 inches that I needed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into my starting half double crochet. chain one and it wants us to work two single crochet into every half double crochet and two single crochet into the top of every cluster so i don't know do we work this because that's not a half double crochet there i guess not so i'm going to skip over that stitch that we've been working our half double crochets in over to the cluster. Okay, now technically this is your half double crochet right here. Nope, singles, okay. And work two single crochets in that. So I personally went a different route with this. I wasn't a big fan of how it was looking. I still don't like how it's looking. Ugh. I didn't like how it was looking with the two stitches in every it was just, it was looking too thick. It was looking too pronounced. See, I want it to look like this. Very understated, but clean. It wasn't looking like that. It was looking like obvious single crochets. I wonder, it just wasn't looking good, but I'm kind of wondering, well, maybe I need to put that chain back and into the first maybe a loose slip stitch and then into the next space over a loose slip stitch like i know this is not part of the pattern but i really didn't like the way it was looking it just was looking too i don't know unfinished see i'll show you it was it was not good i'll show you it was just, it was just looking too, I can't, unfinished is the only way I can describe it. So this is how it's, you know, I just, I don't like that you can clearly see all this. It looks kind of messy. It just looks a little unfinished to me. I don't know why. What do we think of the slip stitching? Eh, I don't like that either. I don't know. I just don't like the border. I wonder what about, come, on, come back here. What about a crab stitch border? I know we've been doing that kind of a lot lately, huh? No, I don't like that either. Well, I guess I just don't like the border. <laughs> it just didn't, it just doesn't, you know. Let me try something else here. What about, 
one single crochet. Oh, I'm still, I know, this is a mess, I know. What if I just used one single crochet? And then do I even need a border at all is my next question. And this is all just personal preference. But what if just one single crochet could create a cleaner line? I just like clean lines. It's a thing. That actually looks pretty good. It's got some stretch too. That actually looks pretty good. And I'm not just doing the tops of the of the puff stitch and the half double. I'm going everywhere a stitch can go. So I am working into this right now. Just seeing how it looks. Just, just getting a feel for it. But it's starting to look a little more like I want it to. What do you guys think? What do you think of that? That looks a little cleaner, doesn't it? I mean, it actually, if you look at it, look at these stitches, it actually looks more like what they did. It looks like one thread was used instead of the doubled up, doesn't it? I think so. Like, yeah. So, um, give this a try. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and worked that single strand, single crochet all the way around, and I like it. And I do genuinely do feel it looks more like what, way more like what they did here. That just looks like one strand to me all the way around. And I feel like I recreated that. So yeah. So I got to weave in my ends. But here is the hat. Now let's work on the cowl and the buttons. Okay, so I've I've been working the collar portion or the cowl and there's so many things about this I don't like. First of all, I don't like this whole section here. I believe this whole section folds in, right? And I've been kind of working with it and it surely doesn't stay folded very dang well. Not at all, especially whenever you go to shape it, it gets very, <laughs> you have to like constantly fiddle with it and keep it in place and it ain't, I don't like it. I don't. Um, I, I can see where it really genuinely would not be necessary on this. I kind of want to eliminate it. Um, also working out a way here that's, in the, in the pattern, they want you to do all of this to fill in, to fill in this slant right here. Oops, to fill in the slant right here. Eh, no. So I kind of want to rework the cowl. It's, I still want it to look just like this, but I kind of want to work it a little bit smarter and less harder. And I think I want to eliminate the area that folds in. I don't think I care for it. If you like it, I will read you the instructions for it. This is how it looks. And see, this is supposed to be the top of our piece here. If you look, everything is going down. So this is the top of our piece here. And all of this is supposed to fold in. I guess that would block out a lot more wind. But man, maybe it's the type of material I'm using. It's just not, it's not um, very folder friendly, especially with as thick as this material is. So I will read you how they want the cowl portion to be worked. This whole section right here, I had to rework this as well because the measurements did not add up. Then I'm just going to work this the way I think would be a bit easier if y'all don't mind. We're just tweaking it a little. Okay, so for the collar portion, what they want you to do is chain 61. And in the second chain from the hook, start working single crochets 
into every single chain to the end so you have 60 single crochets. Then you're gonna work two rows of double crochet and then two rows of single crochet. After that, you will begin working the uh, cluster pattern stitch. So that is how you're gonna work it the way that they say to in the pattern. Again, I'll say one row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, two rows of single crochet. Then we begin the cluster pattern. Okay, also with the pattern, you're gonna work a straight panel and you have to, at the end of every cluster row, you have to cut, weave in your end, come back to the beginning and start working your cluster rows again. There is no chaining and turning. It's like that for nine rows. That's how you work that. If you pick up the pattern, all of that will be in the pattern. And here the portion is right here if you want to read it for yourself and work out that, work it out that way. I am going to choose to go another way. I want to work it in the round. I don't want to have to cut at the end of every row and start over again. Also, like I said before, I hate, I did not like that large section that we worked at the beginning. That's my personal preference. So, going to keep my chain straight and join to form a ring. All right. I'm going to chain one and work one single crochet into every stitch all around. So we're going to start off this row with a single crochet. When the threads are doubled, it's sometimes hard to tell. Okay, I will be back when I get back around to the beginning. There we go. Let's work the cluster pattern. So we have our 61 single crochet, slip stitch into your first single crochet, chain one, work your half double crochet into the same stitch. Now we're going to actually skip a stitch because we don't want to grow this out. We don't want to work any increases. So, we're going to skip now whenever I say to skip a stitch we're going to skip what looks like an upside down L okay here is the body of the stitch and here is the top of the stitch it looks like an upside down L so we're going to skip all of this and around the body here is the next stitch up and then over around the body of the next stitch we work our first cluster chain one to lock it in. Now we will go ahead and like we've been doing, work behind the stitch behind the cluster right here. So work your half double crochet. But now we're going to skip a whole nother stitch. So we're going to skip this whole stitch here and around the body of this next stitch over, we work our cluster. That's one, two, and three. Pull through everything, chain one to lock it in, and then the next stitch over, which is right behind the cluster, work your half double. So to make it easier, what you could do is go skip, skip, work. So skip this little stick right here, skip this whole stitch right here and around the body of this stitch, work your next cluster. So we want to work nine rows of clusters, okay? So just, just like we did with the hat, you will join with a slip stitch into the top of your half double crochet, but don't work into it. Instead, Go ahead, yarn over and into the space right before the cluster, work your half double crochet into there, then work your cluster, 
then jump over to the next space over, work your half double crochet and work your cluster all the way around and just keep keep working that. You should have you should have 20 clusters on this first round and you should maintain 20 clusters all the way for the next nine rows. So I will be right back. I'm gonna work nine rows of this, but it should feel very reminiscent to the hat. Okay, so I did not need to work all nine rows. It's just the right size for me. Of course, I will show you all in the end. I worked one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Is that right? Yes, six. And that's plenty, um, plenty good size for me. It is about five inches, you know, from chest to chin for me. Okay, I already made four of the buttons. So grab a six millimeter hook, leave a fairly long tail for sewing in, and chain two. It's gonna look kind of like a mess and it doesn't have to be perfect or exact. It just has to look like a little wad, okay? <laughs> so it'll work out as long as you make a wad. <laughs> so chain two and in the first chain, work three single crochet. One, two, then I'll come over here to the other side of my slip knot and work my third. Now, without uh, slip stitching or anything like that, we're gonna go into the first single crochet and work two single crochet. And we're gonna work two single crochet into every, into all three stitches around. So there's, that's one and two, one and two, and then right here, one and two. Now we're gonna work slip stitches. In the next stitch over, work one slip stitch. The next stitch after that, work a slip stitch. I skip a stitch and work another just to really make it small. Skip another stitch, work another. And I'm gonna keep working slip stitches wherever they will fit, just making, making this little wad smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm gonna come over here and grab any loop I can get my hook under and make a slip stitch. And then one more time just to close it all off and make a slip stitch. And there you go. Chain one, again, leave a long, a long tail for sewing in and that's it. That's your button. And it's gonna be sewn on the bottom area here. So it will look like that when it sticks up. Okay, so they want you to make four. You can make as many as you want though. Right here is where my slip stitch seam is, where I joined. And I'm just gonna work one, two, three, four. So here we go. I will start down here at the bottom and work that through, twist this around so that it is aiming the direction I want it to, like that. I want it to be sticking up like that. Let's work that in. Now first I'm gonna tie it in a little knot at the bottom. There we go. Just get it down in there. Okay, I'm gonna tie it in a little knot. Now these buttons are gonna be just purely, you know, purely decorative but I will tie these all on first and then I will grab both of these stick them in the darning needle and just weave them in wherever I can get them to go there we go little button. And I will do the same for all of them. Just try to space them out as best I can. Now that one there is fairly centered. So I think I'll put it on this way, kind of push it and create a bottom. And I'll go up a little higher with this one. And then this one will go here. And then one here at the top. 
So that's how I will put all of my buttons on. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I will show you weaving in one of them just for the sake of the video and then that will be it and then I'll try these on for you. Okay, so I've got, I haven't cut my ends off yet but these are all weaved in so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna weave these in. So first I like to cut them a little even, just makes it easier. Okay. Here we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go right into these three stitches right here. Come up under, go over one and come under two of them. That's pretty good. And then one more time, just like that. Okay. All right, and that's it. And here is how my buttons look. Kind of subtle, just barely in there, but you know, they are what they are. Okay, so quick little try on and I will be right back. Would also like to point out that I did not work a final row. That's because I wanted this raw edge. Um, you know, as it stretches out a little bit, you'll be able to see the puff stitches just like you can here because I'm not folding that portion in. So I wanted to keep this edge raw. So this will be the bottom of my cowl and the part that goes near my face is this raw edge here. So that's why there was no final edge instructions for me. Sorry, I didn't make that clear before. I just jumped straight over to buttons, but yes. Okay. Okay, guys, what do you think? <laughs> when I first put this on, because it's a little stiff, I'm like, it's like one of those collars, you know, when you get in an accident. No, I'm just teasing. It's not that stiff. But here it is. What do you guys think from the 1960s? I wish I knew specifically what year. That would be fun. But here it is. Just nothing special. I didn't, I didn't put any makeup on or anything. <laughs> so this is me in the buff but um here it is i like it it's pretty it's a fun set the dog is very excited right now about it uh, maybe one day in the future when i move to a much colder climate this will be really nice something that i have but i do intend to keep this one for myself because i do foresee that in the future i'm going to be in a colder climate so what do we think <laughs> 